Greetings, my name is Robert Sepper. Thank you for joining us. Let's start. An international group of scientists wants you to join Asgardia, the first publicly accessible space station. A new country named after the Norse mythology's city in the skies could be the first nation ever created in space. The hope is to embark on a mission to mine asteroids and defend Earth from dangerous meteorites, space debris, and other threats. That is, if everything goes according to uncertain, open-ended, and audacious plan put forth by its founders. The group behind Asgardia Project includes space experts based out of Canada, Romania, Russia, and the United States, and they announced their sovereign ambitions from a press conference in Paris on Wednesday. Their core concept is to launch a robotic satellite within the next 18 months, that's 60 years after Russia launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, then eventually follow up with a permanent space station where, quote, people can live, work, and have their own rules and regulations, unquote. The hope? To democratize space, they say. Ultimately, the organizers envision Asgardians being a, quote, state-of-the-art protective shield for all of mankind from cosmic man-made and natural threats to life on Earth, such as space debris, coronal mass ejections, and asteroid collisions. We must leave Earth because it's very much in the nature of humanity. Ram Jakku, the director of McGill University's Institute of Air and Space Law and an Escardia Project founding member, told Business Insider in a phone interview before Wednesday's press conference. The resources of Earth will be depleted, he said. I would say we have a wish to go where nobody has gone before. Who is Ascardia? Timothy Wilde, a spokesperson for the consortium, would not disclose how many researchers or other experts are currently aligned with the project, but at least five so far, according to materials shared by the publicity company that Wilde works for. Igor Ashuberli, founder of the Aerospace International Research Center in Russia and the new chairman of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, Science of Space Committee, David Alexander, director of Rice University Space Institute, Ram Jaku, director of the Institute of Air and Space Law at McGill University, Joseph N. Pelton, director of the Space and Advanced Communications Research Institute at George Washington University, Dumitru Doran Prunaru, a Romanian cosmonaut. Wilde noted that the project is still in its early stages and it's hoping the initial publicity will attract engineers, scientists, and other talent. He said, quote, what we're doing now is a call to arms, so we want to widen the net." Unquote. In addition to experts, Ascardia is calling on you to join its ranks. They say, quote, the site will allow the first 100,000 people to register to become citizens of Ascardia alongside their nationality on Earth. Ascardia is also crowdsourcing its flag, insignia, and even national anthem. So how is it funded? Wilde would not disclose the organization's current funding level, but claimed a substantial uh, amount had been put forth to get a Scardia project going. He said, quote, we're absolutely confident that the satellite will be launched within 18 months, but in terms of absolute numbers, we're not there yet. Wilde would also not disclose how Ascardia's founders plan to acquire cash to fund its future efforts. 
It would likely need tens of millions of dollars to start out and perhaps billions to sustain itself. Substantial first size satellites called nanosats can be built and launched for roughly millions of dollars, but sending up larger objects requires more powerful and expensive launchers. Right now, one of the cheapest rides into orbit, a couple of hundred miles above Earth, is a Falcon 9 rocket, and SpaceX charges roughly 60 to 65 million for the ride. And some companies will share the, pay the payload and split the cost. Meanwhile, it took 18 nations and about a hundred billion dollars to build and operate the International Space Station, ISS. Can you actually form a new nation in space? Well, in an emailed press release, they said that Asgardia is a fully fledged and independent nation and a future member of the United Nations with all the attributes this status entails. However, according to current international space law, the country that launches an object into space is responsible for it, including any damage it causes to denizens of the Earth. The project is creating a new framework for ownership and nationhood in space, which will adapt current outer space laws governing responsibility private ownership and enterprise so they are fit for purpose in the new area of space exploration, the organization said. So by creating a new space station, private enterprise, innovation, and the further development of space technology to support humanity will flourish free from the tight restrictions of state control that currently exist. So how would that be different from the International Space Station? Well, they said the ISS is a joint venture. There's no entity called ISS. It's just one facility, parts of which are controlled by different nations. It's more or less a condo. And when asked about the laws behind forging a country on a yet to be launched space station, Jacku acknowledged the challenge, but he seemed optimistic. Quote, we have not seen any nation attempt this before so this will be a first, he said. We'll start small and eventually people will begin going there and working and having their own rules and regulations. This facility will become an independent nation. Business Insider contacted the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs for clarification on whether or not current space laws would permit a new country to declare itself in space from the ground with an uncrewed satellite or even with people aboard a space station. They also asked the organization how, if it's not yet permitted, a new nation like Ascardia might need to change space law to form itself. A representative did not immediately respond, so how will Ascardia get built? While painting an ambitious vision for a peaceful future in space, Ascardia is currently quiet on the specifics. Business Insider pressed its representatives for details about timelines, funding, satellite, and space station designs, launch vehicles, personnel, and more. But Ascardia declined to provide any of that information. They said, at this point, we're trying not to give too much technical detail away we have some ideas, but it's not at the level of understanding to put it to, into the public domain. We're taking a measured approach. We're explaining what we want to do now and not jumping the gun on too many details." Unquote. Asgardia's organizers expect to draw plenty of critics, including analogies to the fizzling Mars One project, an effort that continues to claim it will set down astronauts that has, it has recruited on the Red Planet, though multiple investigations suggest that it lacks the funding, manpower, and expertise to pull off the feat. However, Wilde pointed out that trying to form the first space station a couple of hundred miles above Earth is a lot different than trying to colonize Mars, as Elon Musk of SpaceX and Mars One intend. 
He said, quote, I'm sure people will ridicule Asgardia, but I'm not worried. Anyone who tries out of the box things is initially ridiculed. Everything that's amazing starts with a crazy idea. After a while, science fiction becomes science fact. And this is an idea which is just being initiated. Asked if he would live in Asgardia, he responded, why not? I think it would be less risky than going to Mars, he said. And you could more easily come back to Earth if you didn't like it. This article was published this article was originally published by Business Insider, October 12, 2016. I'd like to thank my subscribers who share my videos. I'd like to thank you for joining me, for listening, and I will see you next time.